So to get started with this one, we're going to go ahead and get us a sphere in the center and just point our camera at it like this. Then in the shading workspace, make sure you go to object mode in the node editor. And then I just have a 3D viewport set up like this. Then if I go to rendered preview, I'm going to be using cycles. You can also use EV. There's no displacement affecting in this one, so both work just fine. Then for the lighting, I just uncheck scene world and then selected the built-in forest HDRI that Blender already has. So we'll press new. And then for the material name, I'll just call it sidewalk concrete, just like this. Nice. Then we'll go ahead and enable the Node Wrangler add-on so we have all the shortcuts and everything. So edit preferences, go to add-on, search up the Node Wrangler and check the box there. Then we can press Shift-A and we're gonna look for a Voronoi texture like this. Then we can control shift and left click, we can preview it. Now I'll press control and T, which will give us this mapping and texture coordinate. And then I'll pick the object into the mapping. So I'm gonna control shift and left click again to preview the color, because that's what we're gonna be using in this material. So I'm just gonna grab this and move it over here so we have it out of the way. So this is gonna be our mask, and we're gonna have four la layers of um, uh, bump using these Voronoi's. And so we'll go ahead and make that right now. So to do that, we'll hit shift A, we're gonna search for math mode. I'm gonna switch the function on him to greater than. Then we'll control shift and left click to preview him. Then I'm gonna take the color from the Voronoi texture into the value, which will give us this. Currently, I'm gonna change the threshold to a one. We'll be changing it in differently on the different levels of detail, but currently we'll leave it like this. Then we're gonna take this Voronoi and change the scale to a 200, like so. Then I'll press shift A. I'm gonna search for a mix RGB. I'm gonna plug this value from the greater than into the factor, control shift and left click to preview. Then I'm going to take this color and I'm going to put it into color one and then this black, I'll make a black. And currently, this is what we have here. It's super, this is a super fine detail in the concrete, but I don't want it to be colors there. I want it to be sort of a noise texture affecting it instead of having it be solid colors, because if we zoom in really closely, we can see that they're solid colors and that's not exactly what I want to be happening. So I'm going to hit shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture like this. Then we want our vector. So I'm going to press shift and hold right click, which will give us this extra node. And then we can grab that and move them over here and then plug them into the vector. Then we can control shift and left click on this noise texture. I'm going to change the scale to a 20 and the detail to a 10 like this. Then we want it to be affecting where the color is. So then I can just hit shift A and I'm going to search for a mix RGB. And then we're going to have our color go into the factor here and then this factor into here. Into color one. Or actually we can put it into color two, why not? Then I'll control shift and left click, change color one to a black. And what this is going to do is it's going to randomize the effect that the noise texture is having on different parts based on the color of that individual Voronoi. So then we're going to take this and plug it into color one up here. So now we'll control right click and cut off color two because we want color two to be black. So if we control shift and left click, this looks the exact same as this does. And that's only because this is the first level of detail and it'll be getting taken away as we go. So to make this more uh, compact, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this mix node right here and this noise texture and place it underneath like this. And that's just gonna keep everything more organized when we duplicate this. So I'm gonna select everything right here and press Control Shift D like this, and that'll give us another level of detail. And to keep more organized, I'll go ahead and select these ones up here and press Control J, put them in a frame like this, and then do the same with this one, select and press Control J. Now we have two, and we're, like I said, we're gonna do four. So I'm gonna go ahead and select these guys again, press Control Shift D, move them up. And then if you press Shift R, it'll repeat the action again. So now we have our four levels of detail. Then I'm gonna press Shift, hold right click over these guys, which will give us this node to keep everything organized. I'm just gonna select all of this, including this guy, and grab them over here, just so we stay uh, nice and clean. So now that we have this, we're gonna plug this color into color two here. So currently that's not going to do anything, but on this guy, I'm going to change the greater than to a 0.5. Then the scale, I'm going to move down to a 150. And when we do that, we can see that things change. So if we preview this greater than, we can see where we want it to be affecting and the different scale and how it's a different scale than the one before, like this. It, they're slightly different scales. And then we blend them together like this. Then up here, we're going to take this value and change one divided by three. Controls with left click to preview. We're gonna take the previous code mix node into color two, like so. And then we'll change this scale to a 100, like this. So as we can see, we are slowly um, uh, 
getting more variation and getting a more of an organic look in our cement like it was actually poured instead of someone smoothed it out perfectly and it literally was poured yesterday and smoothed yesterday or something. Then we'll control to look like this top guy. I'm going to switch the scale on him to a 50. This is going to be our bigger one. Then the threshold I'm going to bring down to a 0.15. So we don't want it to be affecting a quarter. I just want it to be affecting a little bit. Then we'll take this color into color two, like this. Now, this is what we wanted to see here. Everything's being affected quite nicely. And we have our different levels of detail and it's looking quite good. The reason we didn't put this at 0.25 is a quarter because I think it's a little bit much. I like it to where it's at a 0.15 and it sort of pops a little bit more that way in my opinion instead of looking uh, too organized. Anyways, we're gonna practice this into our bump now. So I'll press Shift A, search for a bump node, grab our color into the height here, then take this normal into our bump normal. And now we can control shift and left click the shader. And we currently have this, I think it's a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna bring this down to a 0.5, just so that it's only affecting half in that way. So now we're gonna bring it into our roughness. I'll press shift A, search for a range, map range node like this. Take this color into our value, control shift left click preview. And we want our minimum roughness to be like a 0.6 because this isn't very really reflective at all. And then the max will be a, will be a whole one, just like that. So then we're gonna take that result into the roughness here. So if we control shift and left click to preview, we can see what we have going on. Now it's time for color. And to do that, I'm gonna hit shift A. I'm gonna search for a mix RGB node. I'm also gonna switch for, search for an invert node so that we can get some more contrast in these. So I'll take this color into the invert and the invert into the factor of our mix RGB. Now I'll preview the mix RGB with control shift and left click. Then the hex value for this color one, it's gonna be the lighter color of the concrete. There's gonna be an F0E8D8. Again, that is an F0E8D8, just like that. Then this color two is gonna be the darker one. It is a 554E42. Again, that is a 554E42, just like that. So now we have the base color. Well, obviously we wanna make adjustments to this further. So we'll hit Shift A and search for a hue saturation node that comes after it. So we can adjust the values as a whole without changing the individual colors. Then I'll Shift A search for a brightness contrast node as well so that we can adjust the contrast, things like that. Then I'll plug that into our base color. Now if we control shift and left click this principled shader, we can adjust some things. So currently we have sort of, this is a little bit dirty. Um, it looks pretty good though for sidewalk concrete. So some of us may want to brighten it up a bit a little. So I'm gonna bring the value up to a two like this. That's gonna brighten things up. And I'm also gonna desaturate it slightly, bring it down to like maybe a 0.7. And then that's starting to look quite a bit like sidewalk concrete. You can maybe wanna bring up the brightness to like a 0.05. Maybe if you want it to be a little bit wider, or if you want it to be like some sort of old town, you can bring up the contrast here. And that's gonna really make some values pop. You can even bring up the contrast super high to like a 0.7 and you can get some really weird effects. Obviously the higher you go with the contrast, the weirder it gets, things like that. But I'm gonna bring it up to like maybe like a 0.2. And I think it looks pretty good. Maybe a 0.1 is enough. Nice. But anyways, that is the finished uh, sidewalk concrete material. You can obviously make adjustments to it. Like I said, with the brightness, contrast, hue, saturation to get the right color for your scene. And so, yeah. Um, with that said, hopefully you enjoyed and can use this in your renders, maybe along with the asphalt I made a bit a while back. But yeah, I'll see y'all guys in the next one.